everybody. It's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering all of your email questions. Let's jump right into it. This question comes from Rodrigo from Monterrey, Mexico. Rodrigo asks, is it a fact or opinion that Ornithomimus was an omnivore? Well, Rodrigo, everything in paleontology to most degrees is an opinion. We don't really have a tremendous amount of facts, so a lot of it is opinion. But we use science in making uh, educated guesses about things. When we look at Ornithomimus and his cousins, Struthiomimus and all the other Mimus brothers, um, when we look at those guys, they're built very similar to an ostrich, and in fact their skull is very ostrich-like. Well, ostriches are omnivores. Now, most people think they're, they're plant eaters, but listen, I watched an ostrich chase a lizard, catch it, and eat it. I know ostriches can be carnivorous. So they're om uh, omnivores, and so it, there's every reason to believe that uh, Ornithomimus is also an omnivore. But at the end of the day, it's just obviously, uh, it's an opinion. It's not, it can't be rooted in absolute fact. He also asked, do I think Pachycephalosaurus fought with other Pachycephalosauruses? In other words, did they use their dome to butt heads? I do not believe they did. I do not think they did. Now, they definitely were using those heads for something because that was too much weight to carry for just ornamentation. They are using that skull to ram um, uh, potential predators. And they've, it's even been speculated that they could be omnivorous. They may have been using their head to knock down potential prey. But I don't think they were using it to butt heads. And the reason why is because in the animal kingdom, usually the only animals that'll butt heads are males, males against males fighting for, uh, uh, um, to, for, for rivalry, fighting in a rivalry. Uh, usually the females don't. But in all Pachycephalosaurus, we find both male and female have the domed head. Second of all, the shape is not really very good for running and hitting somebody. The shape is kind of rounded at the top. And so if it ran into something with that round dome, it would slide off. Well, when you look at Pachycephalosaurus, you notice it's got great big spikes all the way around the base of that dome. If you lower your head and another one lowers his head and you ram into each other, what's going to happen is you're going to hit and you're going to slide off because that dome is round. And that means that my horns are going to go into your eyes and my horns are going to go into your eyes. And what good does that do? You have two males that have now literally blinded themselves. It doesn't make any sense. And finally, the reason why I don't believe they did is because when we look closely at them under magnification, you don't see the kind of cracking you would expect to see if two animals were lowering their head and running at each other and smashing into each other. Now, when you look at the skull, you are going to see cracks in the, in the fossilized skull, but those occurred after the dinosaur had already died, not while the dinosaur was alive. Okay, uh, Joseph from Columbus, Ohio asks, what is the largest mammalian land predator ever known? Joseph, I believe it's one of these two animals. It's either Dinohyus, which is a giant predatory pig uh, that lived here in North America, or it's Magistotherium, a, a, an enormous wolf that lived in Libya during, I think, the Miocene period. Magistotherium is gigantic. He's so big, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, if he's not the biggest, he's absolutely among the biggest. I don't think, I don't know of any mammal, predatory mammal, bigger than this thing. It's so big that it's been proposed that they ate mastodons. They ate elephants. That's a big dude. Um, okay, uh, Robbie from Springfield, Virginia asks, was Longusquama a carnivore or an omnivore? For those of you that don't know, Longusquama is this funky looking lizard with these great big tall appendages sticking up from his back. Uh, Robbie, I believe that uh, I read one time that it's related to the common anole, which is a lizard that lives here in North America or here in San Antonio. I don't know if it lives in Springfield, but it lives here. And anoles are omnivores. They eat a little bit of plants, but mostly they're carnivores. They eat insects. So from my understanding, Longusquama was probably an omnivore, but probably leaned more towards a diet of uh, meat. So or not, not so much meat, but insects. So it was probably a, uh, a carnivore. Casey from Temecula, California. Who do you think would win in a fight between Allosaurus and T-Rex? Well, Allosaurus is my all-time favorite dinosaur, but in all honesty, Tyrannosaurus rex was just too big, too powerful, too massive. Um, now, I know that you know this, Casey, but for some of you younger viewers, Allosaurus and T-Rex didn't live at the same time, so they probably would have never seen each other. But Casey just wants to know, and, and that's, those are fine. I enjoy answering these questions. Um, uh, T-Rex is just so big. Allosaurus was faster and could probably run circles around him, but if T-Rex ever got those teeth in poor Allosaurus, that would be the end of it. 
Uh, Zach, one of my good buddies from Facebook. Zach writes to me all the time. Uh, Zach from Uniontown, Pennsylvania says, Megalodon was such a massive creature. Could anything take it on? <sighs> Two words, Zach. No and way. <laughs> no way. Megalodon is the ultimate predator on planet Earth. It is an absolute monstrosity. This thing is so giant, so powerful, and had such a massive bite force that nothing, nothing would have attacked it or survived an attack except for maybe a bigger Megalodon. If Megalodon and T-Rex lived at the same time in the same place, I can assure you they would, uh, T-Rex would never get into the water. And if Megalodon existed when humans were first venturing into the ocean, we couldn't have gone into the ocean until we came up with the technology to build a big enough ship to keep him from attacking it. So Megalodon is just as big and bad as it gets. All right, my buddy Nico from Tigard, Oregon wants to know, hey George, is there any news about the dig site? Because I'm guessing at this point we're going to have to do it next summer. I had invited Nico to come with me to help me excavate a dinosaur up in South Dakota. Nico, yeah, my schedule was just too busy this year. I couldn't get out there. But I certainly promise you one day I will take you out in the field. And for those of you, if you ever get the opportunity to go get, dig up a dinosaur, it's very difficult to describe the feeling of digging up a bone and holding something in your hand that used to be alive. It's absolutely overwhelming. There have been times that I have literally had to sit down on the ground and catch my breath because I'm so overwhelmed by the creature that's laying in front of me. It is beyond belief. And the rush you get when you pick up a little raptor tooth or you pick up a tyrannosaurus tooth and you're looking at it and you're thinking, this thing, this abomination, would have eaten me if it were alive with me today and I'm holding its tooth in my hand. It literally propels you back in time. It is a feeling that I just wish I could describe better than that beyond belief. Finally, Seth from Casterville, Texas. Seth, um, my mother was born in Casterville, Texas, and I grew up on a ranch about 15 miles from there. I love Casterville and I've got a lot of good friends there. Seth wants to know, who is my favorite dinosaur? Well, it's, it's Allosaurus. Ever since I was a little kid, I loved Allosaurus. Let me tell you a story, Seth. When I was little, I was probably three or four years old, um, I got a set of dinosaurs for Christmas from my mom. My mom bought them for me. And I opened them up and there were some cool dinosaurs. There was Parasaurolophus, there was, uh, oh gosh, there was Triceratops and an Ankylosaur and really cool dinosaurs. And there was a Tyrannosaurus Rex and there was an Allosaurus. But in this collection that she bought me, the Allosaurus and T-Rex were the same size. So right off the bat, I thought they were both cool. But I thought the Allosaurus looked so much cooler than the T-Rex. So that turned out to be my favorite dinosaur. And as I grew up, I just continued to like Allosaurus more than any other dinosaur. I've studied Allosaurus more. And here's a really cool story. Uh, the very first time I ever got to go dig for dinosaurs, the very first bone I ever uncovered turned out to be the tailbone of an Allosaurus. So that is fate, my friends. I grew up loving Allosaurus, and the first dinosaur bone I ever found was an Allosaurus, and ever since then, Allosaurus and I have been connected. Uh, in fact, my dog's name was Allie. <laughs> Okay, everybody, that's it. I hope I gave you some good information, something useful for, for you. Uh, if you have a question, go to dinosaurgeorge.com, send me an email, or, or not an email, but go to Ask Dinosaur George page and fill out the form and send it to me. If you just try to send me an email, sometimes I just don't get them. Uh, take care, everybody. Uh, make sure to take care of the people around you. And for you young people, you practice your manners and you practice your reading. And I promise you, if you're good at those, you're going to be good at everything you do. Take care. I'll see you all soon.